y'all. All right, on the last uh, video, you know, we talked about the importance of trap bedding and proper trap bedding and, and why it's so important to bed those traps good and solid. Um, and this is just another example of that. We finally picked up this coyote here. When we came out scouting this property to set, there was a lot of tracks up and down these ditches. So we decided rather than setting up in the middle of the road like I would typically do, look more like the coyotes were traveling down in the ditches. So that's where we set the trap. And you know, weather is a lot of problems for trappers. Uh, you know, rain, man, you get rain, you got to go remake all your sets. You got to fix everything back. You got to rebed, rebate, relure, and it can be a pain in the butt. <clears throat> but we had to do that about two or three days ago out here. And when I rebed my traps after a rain, basically everything, and I'm down south, you know, it stays hot down here. I don't get freezing ground. I don't have to use wax dirt and things like that. But what I do have to deal with is just the slush and the muck in the trap bed. So I have to basically muck out the trap bed every time we get a bunch of rain, <clears throat> find some dry dirt. Sometimes I even take buckets of sand with me uh, just to make a good solid trap bed after the rain. So that's another thing to look at too when you're, when you're remaking your sets after a rain. You know, you can go up, take a stick, and kind of poke the jaws of the trap a little bit just to keep your smell off of it. <clears throat> and, uh, and just make sure that trap still bedded good and solid. But anyway, picked up the fifth coyote off this property. Uh, been out here right out of week now. Uh, this is another good mature dog. Got him in a Bridger 175. Uh, I four coiled all my 175. So as long as they're four coiled, I still trust them to hold coyotes. Uh, but anyway, still picking up coyotes. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, we're just gonna go through, you know, just some trapping basics and all while we're while we're on this video and show you guys lots of catches and things like that. So sit back and enjoy. All right, just picked up coyote number six off this property. Uh, I think today's Saturday, yesterday was a week. Um, so we've almost caught a coyote a day out here. We've doubled up a couple times or doubled up one time. <clears throat> anyway, regardless, Got him at MB450, another nice deep full pad catch. Um, I guess I could give a quick little trap review on this. I've always been a Bridger 175 guy, and I've said this on previous videos. The reason I was so adamant about the 175s is I just didn't want to spend the money on the MBs. Uh, and I mean, they are a little bit more of an expensive trap, but it stands to reason why. Um, all my 175s, the springs kind of got a little weak on them after a few years, and I ended up having to four coil all of them. And four coiled, they're perfect. They're just as strong and quick as these uh, MB traps. But you gotta do a little bit of adjustment on them when they first come out the box, the, the bridgers, when they first come out the box, I always have to file the dog down a little bit because it's a little bit too long and you get way too much pan travel out of it. These MBs come out the box ready to go. Uh, so if you're not on too tight of a budget, I recommend those MB450s over anything else. Uh, the MB550s are good, but like I've said before, they're a little harsh on the Fox if you're trying to live market or release. So anyway, picked up another coyote. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing handled, get this set remade. We actually caught a possum right over here behind the camera about, I don't know, three or four days ago. <clears throat> and I've always said, you catch a possum, you get a fresh trap and you move it 10, 15 feet away from the set. And that's what we did probably center of the fight circles from the possum and the coyote were about 10 feet away so anyway it worked it's kind of a young dog uh, probably born early this spring but either way we're gonna get it took out of here so we're gonna snap some pictures and keep moving all right here we go this guy number five out of this field number seven off of this property in about eight or nine days um like i said before there was a ton of tracks out here and Originally, I only had three traps in, and we set this fourth one. Uh, like I say, it's a big field. It's 25 or 30 acres, so there's plenty of room for four, maybe even five traps out here. But anyway, this trap's been soaking about three or four days. This is the newest one that we put in. Uh, we hadn't had any, any action on the other three that we've been catching in. But pick this guy up, another MB450 full pad catch. Nice coyote. Uh, it's about middle of November now. Um, so it's, we finally got some good cool weather, consistent cool weather to hang around. And uh, it's definitely showing on our catches. So anyway, gonna remake this set. We had a flat set in here. Uh, we're gonna remake it and 
get some pictures and keep moving. All right, here we go. We picked up another gray fox from this uh, little intersection here. This is the second gray. We call it red here, and now two grays. They're actually gonna go pop another trap in right down the road because uh, the land manager uh, called me yesterday and said he got a trail camera right 100 yards down the road. So he had a fox and a coyote on it walking the edge of the property line. Hadn't had a trap set over there yet because there's a main dirt road right there a lot of people drive down i don't really like seeing people driving or i don't want people driving by and seeing animals and traps and stuff like that but we're gonna set one just kind of hide it up in the bushes a little bit but anyway picked us up another gray fox uh another mb450 catch so we're gonna get him out of here and get this set remade keep moving along All right, so here we go. It's a pull day on this property, the same place we've been catching all these fox off of. This is gray fox number six off this place. Uh, we ended up with six grays, two bobcats, coyote, and I think eight or nine reds. A uh, couple raccoons, a couple possums, about normal. Anyway, um, got him in a dirt hole set here with MB450, back foot catch. Uh, this is pretty much gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. We're gonna be pulling <coughs> pulling this property today and pulling another property uh, two days from now but I'm gonna wrap this video up with a little trap review uh, I want to do some comparisons on the MB 450s MB 550s and the Bridger 175s those are the three most common traps I use so stick around I hope you enjoy that and appreciate you watching thus far All right, so I just want to give you guys a quick overview on my traps, uh, what my preference is for the traps that I use. Um, I got three traps in my arsenal, MB 550, MB 450, and a Bridger 175. I'm really starting to get away from the Bridger 175s just because when I started out trapping as a business, I bought a ton of these traps. And economically, it made more sense for me to buy these traps. They were cheaper, but a good trap. Um, and as I built my business up, I've started putting in more uh, MBs into my into my arsenal, um, and I'm slowly but surely getting it to where I have nothing but MB 450s in my in my trap boxes. Um, and you know, there's not a humongous difference in the catch surface on these traps. I mean, other than the MB 550, but comparing the 175 and the 450, there's not a ton of difference. Uh, the biggest difference, in my opinion, is the pan, the size of the pan. You got a bigger area in the 450 for an animal to step on. Uh, let me just take a quick look here <clears throat> at the pan size. You just got a bigger area for the animal to step on and have the potential to be caught. Now, we got about, this is a laminated 175. You got about five and a half inches outside to outside here. And I think it's about four and three quarter across. Here, you're right at five. This is an MB450, you're right at five inches uh, outside to outside and about four and a half four and three quarters somewhere in there across the middle but there again the pan's a lot bigger and if you look at the jaws on these traps here's your laminated 175 and here's your uh mb450 straight out the box you can see the difference there it's not a whole heck of a lot of difference in the jaw width on these things i prefer the 450s just because they have that wider jaw comes out of the box well you know a wider jaw width and the size of the pan for like I say, increasing the odds of an animal actually stepping on a trap. The biggest reason that I'm going to these traps, um, number one, they're ready to go straight out of the box. You don't have to do any adjustments. You don't have to do any any filing on the dogs or the pans or anything like that to get them right. They are 100% ready to go out of the box. And the reason that I prefer the MB450 over the MB550 is the weight of the trap. I catch a lot of fox down here and I do sell some on the live market. And I also have some places that I trap where the landowners or land managers actually want me to release the fox. So we get into foot damage. You know, what's acceptable to release an animal, what's acceptable to sell an animal as far as the foot damage goes. And I find that I get more foot damage, especially on Fox in these MB 550s. And I think the reason behind that is the weight of the trap. Um, I don't have a scale out here or anything, but I mean, just judging, this is a couple of pounds of steel. And the MB 450, 
you're probably looking at, you know, a, a pound, pound and a half of steel. And when you're talking about uh, seven to 10 or 11 pound gray fox in a trap, and he's sitting there and he's fighting until you get there, and he's dragging around two, two and a half pounds of steel on his foot versus a pound to a pound and a half of steel on his foot. It's going to, this is going to have the potential to do more damage to the, to the skin on the foot. So that's why I like the 450s. The biggest thing is they catch, they hold big animals like coyotes. Um, I've even caught otters. I've caught beavers and things like that in them and they hold great. So like I said, I just want to give you guys a quick overview on my traps and why I use them and why I like them. And appreciate y'all watching this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and check out some of the other stuff we got. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.